Professor Tawamani sir, the principal of American College, the respected Professor V.K. Malhotra, member secretary, president of uh, Indian Academy Association, uh, respected Professor Madan, secretary of Indian Academy Association, uh, Professor Mutraja, the head of the Department of Economics of uh, American College, uh, and uh, other faculty members like, uh, I mean, uh, Kandabra, uh, Jabaraj, and uh, Jaipal, Jaipal Raj, and all the faculty members in the Department of Economics. Uh, I would like to express my sincere thanks to uh, you all members for having given me this very good opportunity. And I also congratulate the Professor Mutraja for, uh, for his initiative to have a very interesting and uh, uh, highly informative seminar uh, webinar today. Uh, I'm very much thankful to Professor Madan also, uh, IE Secretary, for having given me this very opportunity to come over here and share certain views related to the topic. Uh, in fact, uh, those who are, I mean, uh, uh, coming the later stage, whenever you go for a seminar program, and uh, if you are the last uh, presenter of a particular program, the previous presenter used to make all the, I mean, highly informative data, uh, so that the second presenter will be always easy. <laughs> Uh, to, I mean, uh, to, uh, uh, to conduct the session. So in that case, I mean, uh, uh, Professor Madan, I mean, presented uh, uh, highly, I mean, uh, uh, precise data about what is going on around the world, how uh, rich economies, poor economies, uh, what about our rank with respect to exports, and even uh, yes, compared with them I mean, in China. So I'm not coming to that aspect, but uh, Professor uh, Madanji has uh, told something about uh, the three important organizations, World Bank, IMF, and uh, uh, WTO. Uh, so I am directly coming to the point. Uh, friends, uh, by the time uh, in May 12 as well as May 14, uh, both our uh, Prime Minister of uh, India and as well as uh, our Finance Minister of India, uh, while, uh, uh, while presenting the uh, COVID package, to activate the economy, uh, which was um, affected due to COVID-19. They have brought a list of items, as Professor uh, I mean, Madanji cl uh, clearly pointed out that how much importance given to uh, uh, small and micro medium sector, nearly uh, 3 lakhs and 30,000 rupees uh, worth of package uh, announced only for micro, small, and medium scale enterprises. And uh, similarly, uh, uh, and the, that package is fully concentrated on, I mean, uh, credit, uh, bank credit, uh, transfer of, uh, direct, direct, direct transfer of money and the employment generation for the rural areas uh, are affected people. Uh, and, uh, so, related to all aspects and the privatization also a part of that one. And overall, they gave a name, uh, as, as Professor Madanji pointed out, that uh, Atman Nirbar Bharat. This Atma Nirbar Bharat uh, has five pillars. I mean, as, as stated by our Prime Minister, as, uh, I mean, what he has stated about these five pillars. The first pillar is about economy. The second pillar is about uh, infrastructure development. And the third pillar is about, uh, I mean, uh, technology driven, uh, I mean, uh, knowledge development. And the fourth pillar, uh, vibrant uh, demography. And the fifth one, uh, demand. Uh, this is with respect to what I mean. Our Prime Minister, I mean, uh, discussed, uh, uh, discussed, and uh, what our I mean, France Minister has brought out uh, in the form of uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to this one, uh, our uh, Vice Chairman of uh, Nidhi Ayog, uh, uh, he also brought some uh, important uh, aspect with respect to our. Uh, Package that is a social security for unorganized workers. The three, I mean, three important elements of these uh, uh, items. One is uh, social security measures for unorganized workers. Then uh, privatization. The third one is, I mean, land for industrialization program. And uh, you just to say, the package of uh, overall package of uh, COVID-19 package. Eh? as well as the five pillars of uh, uh, Atmanirbhar, as well as the three important elements of Nidhi I mean, Vice Chairman, uh, nowhere it is, uh, it is mentioned or stated anything about external sector. 
a volume process madan i mean stated that i mean uh, this much percentage of export is contributed by uh, micro small medium scale enterprise something like that and the rank wise also he has stated something like that in his presentation but uh, from the government side uh, while announcing the package for uh, uh, our uh, revival of uh, uh, covid 19 affected economy no one it is stated that uh, um, this much amount money is allotted for uh, foreign exports or this much money allotted for uh, import of what or maybe though uh, the overall package is talking about self reliance uh, I, i can directly come to the point why i, I stated that i mean uh, uh, that's no uh, classification regarding uh, the external economy and in the package overall package they have a name they have given name self reliance the self reliance uh, uh, means uh, not depend on others that, uh, that in the directly self reliance opposite to self reliance is uh, external sector only just to see that uh, government started giving importance to self reliance uh, okay well and good uh, but uh, opposite to the, the term is openness openness is coming in the external sector only and uh, as far as uh, so when we are giving importance to self reliance automatically we are preventing the other 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 part other part means uh, external sector or openness of economy uh, this i mean i i hope that you understand it because when i say say that, say that i am a rich person the opposite term for rich person is poor person only when i say that i am a democratic the opposite i mean Uh, term for our democracy is undemocratic. Undemocratic may be sometimes may be dictatorship. I mean, like for India, it's the largest democratic country. Uh, and the opposite to that, well, China is, I mean, the uh, largest, uh, I mean, uh, dictatorship country. I mean, I am not using the word dictatorship, but a type of uh, controlled economy. Uh, that is the reason when the when, when India is telling that uh, I mean, twenty soldiers were uh, uh, killed in the attack in the in the, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the China. india china i mean border dispute uh, no data available how many people died how many people affected uh, whether uh, we are we are simply telling that uh, some helicopter came from china and took away some people something that much only we know no data is available and uh, uh, no data uh, i mean uh, went out out of the i mean china because their economy is highly controlled economy so when i say that uh, ours is a democratic economy opposite to democracy econ- democratic economy is uh, something what is i mean uh, communist economy or uh, china economy i mean uh, opposite say is the uh, term uh, when they say that uh, our says our should be self reliant economy the opposite term is uh, i mean uh, against openness against openness or against the external sector i mean uh, uh, i mean uh, strategies i mean uh, though I, i hope that i i, I gave the term now as professor uh, madan ji clearly pointed out that i am just coming to um, 1944 i mean because self reliance and uh, this these are all i mean not something new for us i mean self reliance import limiting policy or import subsidies policies are not i mean new to us already there in our uh, in our economy immediately after second world war i mean 1944 a group of i mean particularly the winners i mean usa uk and some of the western european countries i mean the winners of second world war the convene a meeting in 1944 at britain wood in that uh, uh, britain wood they have decided to have three organizations that's what i mean professor i mean madan ji touched on that three they wanted to have three organizations one is uh, imf international uh, international monetary fund and uh, second one is i mean international bank for reconstruction and development that is generally used to call world bank and third one is uh, international trade organization i mean international trade organization what is the purpose of international monetary fund uh, during the second world war most of the european economies are most all over the countries some of the major, major ports are uh, destroyed uh, major uh, i mean ro- bridges roads uh, and uh, schools electricity uh, facilities like electricity water connection everything affected during the the second world war period either due to i mean uh, uh, hitler invasion or i mean due to japanese uh, forces or so many other things happened so to provide long term financial support to the countries which were affected during the second world war period they wanted to have an organization international uh, world uh, world bank i mean international bank for the construction and development which i mean countries which were affected and uh, second important organization is that uh, so to reconstruct their economies they need iron they need uh, i mean uh, 
cement they need. I mean, uh, stone uh, quarries, or even they have to reconstruct bridges. I mean, uh, roads, uh, be reconstruct electricity, everything. They need a lot of iron, steel, and uh, this type of items. So every country, uh, I mean, supposed to import uh, uh, more this type of infrastructural uh, uh, raw materials from other countries. So automatically, there will be balance of payment disequilibrium. To so to overcome that type of balance of payment disequilibrium, uh, a small bank, I mean, the, uh, international, uh, the international monetary fund, monetary fund uh, was there to provide short-term financial assistance to countries which are uh, which are going to face, I mean, balance of payment disequilibrium. I mean, uh, middle of second world war period. The third organization, uh, international trade organization. In fact, uh, they planned it, international trade organization, because uh, before, I mean, uh, 1929. Uh, most of the countries had the uh, had the I mean uh, yeah, uh, practice of uh, high tariff rates, uh, and the bilateral trade agreements, uh, and uh, devaluation of uh, currencies, uh, competitive devaluation of currencies, and high I mean price level. So everything affected the global uh, free movement of commodities before uh, 1929. Finally, that affected the free flow. Then uh, 1929 depression took place. Uh, and so I built after the Second World War period. So the countries, I mean, uh, thought that hereafter, whatever mistakes uh, they have committed uh, before 1949 should not uh, take place in the future regarding uh, tariff rates, I mean, uh, devaluation of currencies or this type of bilateral trade agreements and uh, uh, something related. So they wanted to have a system, I mean, a rule based trade. That's what they should do. Uh, they wanted to have a framework within which the trade activities should take place here after that's what i mean uh, so okay is it okay yeah, ah okay okay thank you thank you thank you uh, because some message is coming that uh, the no, no, uh, messages uh, because they are said that there may be some problem ah okay okay thank you thank you we, we are in right direction please ah okay okay because uh, that one, they wanted to have a, a framework within which trade activities should take place year after. That's what uh, I mean. Uh, they decide. That's what they thought. For that, they wanted to have an organization, international trade organization. And uh, in 1948, uh, nearly 23 countries, I mean, convened a meeting in uh, Geneva, and uh, they decided uh, to formalize the three organizations. And uh, there, World Bank came into existence, IMF came into existence. But uh, not the World Trade Organization, not the International Trade Organization. Instead of International Trade Organization, another organization came. That is known as a uh, General Agreement on uh, Trade and uh, Tariff and Trade. Yes, uh, God Agreement. Yes, it, it originated in 1948 only. And uh, so that agreement was there up to 1994. That's what I mean. Our mother clearly pointed out that for 1995 January onwards, we, I mean, we have World Trade Organization. But from 1948 to 1994, that was the God Agreement only on operation. Uh, but uh, in, uh, India also very much associated with the, the organization. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, immediately after independence, what India did, we started following import substitution policy. I mean, import substitution policy, we did not give much importance to uh, exports or export related developments like, I mean, South Korea or uh, Singapore or Hong Kong or even uh, Taiwan, or to a large extent, uh, you can, we can say Japanese also. Yes, uh, when, when there was a huge demand for uh, raw materials in European countries, when there was a huge demand for consumer developers in European countries, immediately after the Second World War, when there is, was a huge demand for, I mean, two-wheelers, four-wheelers, uh, and uh, uh, social, whatever, I mean, uh, extra, uh, I mean, uh, curricular, I mean, demands uh, increased in Western countries, uh, all these demands were fulfilled by Countries like, I mean, uh, Singapore, countries like Taiwan, countries like Hong Kong, I mean, uh, island like, uh, uh, I mean, Hong Kong or even uh, South Korea and uh, Taiwan and um, Japan. So, but, but by that, at that time, uh, we closed our economy. We closed our economy means we did not give uh, much importance to external sector or exports. In case, if India uh, uh, followed the same policy of South Korea or even uh, Taiwan, uh, 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 in, in 1951 onwards, I mean, uh, keeping our economy open and keeping our economy to uh, okay. as a supplier of raw materials or finished products to European countries, India would have become a, a, a country better than even America. That's what I, I feel. 
but whatever it may be uh, everything was over so this uh, got agreement uh, was there from 1948 to 1994 during that period only our, our we followed the import subsidies policy we did not give much importance to exports whatever it may be but uh, during the same period uh, there was a, i mean issue like i mean uh, what we are having with uh, china there was a uh, cold war period i mean there was a obvious issue between america and the soviet union and uh, now we are very much aligned with uh, america instead of uh, soviet union and instead of russia or uh, china so at that time very uh, powerful communist power is uh, soviet union and though it was a communist power we aligned with the soviet union then the capitalist economy america but now just we are following uh, opposite to that uh, policy what is that now we are aligned with uh, i mean america a powerful capitalist economy and uh, uh, near to us uh, a communist power is there i mean uh, china is there uh, we are very much afraid of communist power i mean uh, actually india uh, is having no no problem at all with china uh, as far as the trade actions are concerned but unfortunately some development took place uh, for the last i mean uh, i mean Uh, two weeks. I mean, uh, that 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 created some uh, made uh, made our relations strain. Otherwise, uh, though I mean we are very much associated with uh, America. I mean, but we also maintained very good relations with China for quite some time. Uh, that may be the reason. Uh, even the uh, premier from China came to India, and uh, both I'm uh, telling that even uh, the president. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What, sir? Russia wants to back side uh, you that ah. friends want to make the war right yeah 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 go 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 yeah yeah ah so uh, this way i mean uh, we, we very much aligned with i mean uh, usa at present but at that time uh, during the cold war before 1991 Uh, we very much uh, assigned with i mean uh, aligned with i mean uh, soviet union uh, ussr ussr and uh, our export also very much targeted towards uh, i mean ussr only final what happened uh, i am not going much detail into that those aspects i mean uh, finally when uh, so when there was a uh, uh, internal war uh, internal i mean uh, insurgent took place in the soviet union uh, some of the provinces demanded separate country uh, something like that our uh, it, it affected soviet union as well as it affected our export opportunity to soviet union also final what happened uh, by the time 1991 Uh, i mean uh, india had only around 600 million worth of foreign exchange reserve 600 million at present we have around 500 million i mean they were said i have i have, I have uh, seen the latest figure uh, the we have around 500 billion worth of foreign exchange reserve at present in india after uh, opening our economy but 1991 we had only at 600 million foreign exchange reserve and uh, during that period only yes that, uh, that uh, uh, because we did not give much importance to i mean uh, foreign exports uh, or uh, trade activities but only we gave minor uh, importance so in the form of opening a small port in gujarat uh, known as kandala port in gujarat uh, uh, it is named as a, a export processing zone the 19 uh, this happened in 1964 uh, to for uh, for uh, some emergency purpose or uh, some uh, i mean the defense required uh, products export import purpose purpose But later on, in 1984, 85, 86, those period we we opened seven more uh, export processing zones in Kochi, one one in Chennai, one in Chhappan, one in Kolkata, and uh, in Noida, and even Bombay. That type of six more zones were uh, opened uh, in India uh, in, in, in that period. But still, uh, we did not give much importance to uh, uh, exports. And uh, by the time uh, when uh, when we uh, 1990. Uh, when we had only 600 million foreign exchange reserve, uh, our uh, we we borrowed a lot of money to overcome our, our development activities. That I mean created the debt GDP ratio around 5.3 uh, percent of GDP. The debt GDP ratio. And during the same period, our uh, fiscal deficit. Now we are telling about we have to contain uh, fiscal deficit at 3 percent. But you must keep in your mind that uh, there is no scientific rule. Uh, to keep uh, fiscal deficit to be three percent in a developing country, inflation will be very high. Uh, particularly when uh, development is very fast with respect to infrastructure development, with respect to uh, industrial development, uh, inflation will be very high, and uh, the fiscal deficit will be very high. 
and the balance sometimes even balance of payment uh, distribution also will be uh, current account deficit also very very high but uh, this is not at all a problem it, because all, ever, the, all these things happen in western countries but unfortunately uh, to imitate the european countries what we are telling every time we are telling that uh, fiscal deficit with 3% fiscal deficit with 3% uh, but uh, we are not able to uh, move our economy with uh, more uh, uh, development activities that is very much affected but in 1990 Our fiscal deficit was around the 8.4 percent. So fiscal deficit was very high. Uh, the GDP, I mean, our debt to GDP ratio was very high, and inflation rate also around 14 percent. Very high inflation rate at that time, and uh, foreign exchange reserves very low. I mean, uh, because of our uh, our uh, our lack of interest in, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, to play a major role in Western in, in international trade. But one more point you have to keep in your mind that. Uh, at the time of independence our share in the international trade was around 2.4 percent professor madam ji presented a table at present the what is india's trade share in the international economics is that uh, 2.3 percent is presented but before at the time of independence our share was 2.4 percent but at that time what india was exporting to the world economy was i mean that to british economy i'm telling that only i mean uh, uh, tradition agri based traditional items like uh, jute cotton i mean uh, spice items i mean uh, oil cake items when this type of i mean agri based traditional items only we were exporting at the time of 1947 but still our share was much higher uh, in the western trade even uh, people used to say that at that in 1800 and all i'm i'm telling uh, 1800 and all nearly 23% of the world uh, trade was I mean, uh, India share had a 23 percent world share. I mean, it is a 800 period. But uh, later on, it decreased. But in the British period, it came down to 2.4 percent. But immediately after independence, what happened? Since we started following the inward-looking policy or import substitution policies after 91, this 2.4 percent share decreased to 0.5 percent. In fact, as Professor Madanji told that in 1995. Even up to 2000, uh, I mean, uh, our share was uh, around the point five, three decades, point five percent only. From 1950 to 1991, it was point five percent only. Then after, only it started moving only after uh, World Trade Organization started functioning from uh, 1995. So this was the condition. Then, uh, then the 1990, 1990, this was the condition. Suddenly, what happened uh, when uh, Iraq invaded Kuwait? Uh, And the oil prices uh, increased three times per barrel. I mean, uh, uh, it was only seventy dollars per barrel, but suddenly it increased to forty-seven uh, barrels per barrel. It affected our foreign exchange. I mean, reserve as well as I mean import of oil from uh, Gulf. I mean, particularly Gulf countries and Iran. So suddenly, suddenly, what happened at that time? The, the, then I mean, Prime Minister of India uh, uh, approached the World Bank IMF for getting some amount of support. But uh, they asked the then government that you have to provide some collateral uh, for some security. Uh, then only, I mean, we will provide financial support. And they arranged a loan from England as well as Bank of England as well as I mean Swiss Bank. But uh, they put a condition that India should, I mean, transport nearly sixty seven tons of gold from India to these two banks. Uh, anyway, India at that time, I mean, Sadr Singh decided to ship this amount of gold to these two countries. Then finally, what happened? I mean, uh, there was a protest against uh, this decision to uh, ship the gold to these countries for getting uh, some amount of money. So finally, uh, the the Congress government, which was supporting the Chandra Sekhar government, withdrew his support. Then uh, he resigned. Then the election came. In that election only, our Rajiv Gandhi was, uh, I mean, killed in uh, Sri Bharam Bodhur in Chennai near Chennai. Uh, yeah, so after the election, I mean, uh, our Narasimha Rao came as uh, Prime Minister. and uh, we 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 got an excellent uh, i mean uh, economist as a finance minister at that time uh, in fact uh, our manmohan singh became as a finance minister of india in case suppose in case if, if, if rajiv gandhi was uh, i mean elected he was alive he was he was alive and elected as a prime minister of india i don't think that india would have been uh, uh, adopted this liberalization protection globalization policies because as a powerful person i mean sometimes they would have declined it but uh, since i mean uh, the people equally considered at that after uh, rajiv gandhi pe- period when uh, the members were equally i mean uh, treated so narasimha uh, narasimha uh, rao became a prime minister and manmohan singh became the finance minister and he uh, when again he, when he approached the world bank imf 
they also dictated the same policies you should go for uh, liberalization you should go for de licensing you should go for i mean globalization so many criteria that is lpg policy that not what we are telling and uh, and manmohan singh I, I, in fact whatever vision uh, manmohan singh had in his mind at that time if accepted by the uh, then government uh, and if implemented from right from 1991 june onwards uh, again i can tell you india would have become at least i mean uh, far better i mean compared to uh, all whatever problem what you are facing at present with respect to unemployment or i mean export i mean uh, uh, division so many other issues that we solve but uh, he brought a very good trap for india but uh, not implemented uh, properly still now i am telling i am telling that uh, whatever uh, idea uh, our great uh, power princes manmohan singh had in his mind uh, not been completely implemented by the government of india even successive governments i can tell you and uh, then in 1995 as professor uh, madan ji pointed out that uh, from uh, 1995 onwards we are we are under uh, wto period but uh, by the time uh, after 1994 what happened uh, the god agreement was uh, a, a body which was supposed to take care of international trade activities but finally what happened uh, say whatever mistakes countries committed before 1940 uh, uh, 1949 uh, like uh, bilateral trade agreements uh, i mean uh, high tariff rates uh, i mean uh, this type of i mean uh, devaluation of currencies again took place after 1948 now instead of bilateral trade agreement we have we got another term for that but earlier it was bilateral trade agreement uh, now they during the got a period they used to the term into uh, most favored nation status instead of bilateral agreement uh, now we term we change the term and again following the same thing again uh, during the 1994 after 1994 also at, uh, most of the countries imposed high tariff rates uh, inflation very high and uh, devaluation of currencies also took place india also devaluated our currencies to compete with the countries and uh, whatever mistake they have committed before i mean second world war again committed so 1989 there was a, a committee formed under the under the chairmanship of under the leadership of dangal and uh, he only uh, conducted a, a nine rounds of discussions whether to uh, to uh, to carry out this got agreement again or we have to go for another organization and uh, after ninth rounds of discussion that is general known as uruguay rounds of discussions generally we used to call in uh, he submitted the report 1994 and uh, he recommended that uh, this god agreement is not an effective body in, in in carrying out the trade activities so we have to go for another organization which was supposed to i mean uh, uh, come up in 1948 itself known as the international trade organization so he named uh, the new one is instead of international trade organization he named is the world trade organization he named is a world trade organization then countries accepted it india as a founder member Uh, one point you have to keep in your mind that in the case of god agreement also china was not the member country in the case of wto also china uh, china was not the member country but uh, by the time that uh, the wto came with uh, strict rules and regulations what is that member countries should open their economies for other countries member countries other, other member countries if you are india if, if india and pakistan both are members of this organization political differences may be there but as far as the trade is concerned we have to open our borders for china i mean pakistan products similarly i mean chinese products also at that time china was not a member but whatever may be but uh, <laughs> suddenly what happened in 1979 china opened its borders for foreign direct investment after seeing the development experience of hong kong island it was given to england for 90 100 years of lease from 1987 to 1997 In 1979, uh, China realized that uh, this island becomes such a, uh, I mean, uh, high, uh, like I mean, uh, city like uh, New York City or even uh, like I mean, uh, Washington City or even uh, like Japan. So main reason was foreign direct investment. So uh, to so not only that island should be developed and mainland also should be developed. So they adopted the special economic zone strategy in in in, in 19, uh, 1979. So China opened its border for foreign direct investment in the name of Special Economic Zone in 1979, and five regions were identified for that purpose. And that five regions only, I mean, uh, helped China to become such a powerful, second the powerful economy in the world. As Professor Madan Ji presented, how much is their GDP at present? This GDP they got only because 
opening their five regions five regions means a district like areas provinces were opened for foreign direct investment the land is given to foreigners and they can start any industries they can use local laborers they can export whatever they produce to the foreign countries and what for china needed only foreign exchange reserve that reserve only china is acquired there for now we are talking about uh, making india as a 5 trillion economy but for china's foreign exchange reserve alone three more than 3 trillion this 3 trillion i mean they earned only because of this i mean uh, special economic zones that's why i told that uh, this idea this idea only manmohan singh got in his mind in 19 uh, 2000 at that time he sent a, our commerce minister i mean morsali uh, uh, maran to visit this area so how china is making this much i mean export i mean in the international trade how they are making this much i mean foreign exchange reserve uh, in, in in their country let us i mean uh, i mean uh, make a study and let us introduce that same scheme in india he, he brought it in fact in 2000 policy it was incorporated and 2015 that's a act in the special economic zone act in india 2006 january onwards uh, same manmohan singh started implementing the uh, then company started implementing that program you just see that uh, it was the best industrialization program i mean no uh, that's why i told that like uh, such a uh, such a i mean mind of manmohan singh you cannot imagine i mean uh, we can say so many indian economists are uh, getting uh, living abroad it's not like that he manmohan singh wanted to work for our india make our india such a powerful economy in the world but unfortunately that uh, whatever i mean uh, that uh, scheme see the scheme is designed by a communist power in china i mean uh, but uh, successfully uh, drafted successfully implemented and successfully and the government is doing very well with respect to special economic zone program when government of india brought the scheme in india from 2006 january onwards uh, i mean uh, there was a widespread protest ag- against that scheme by a communist power i can say that i mean communist parties uh, even uh, even uh, mamta banerjee was uh, in, in front of that even mamta uh, arun rai arundhati rai and uh, chris karnad and uh, even medha patkar uh, i mean uh, uh, all these have I been mean, people uh, deadly against that program and uh, discourage the farmers not to sell the land for industrial purpose and so many hue and cry created against that uh, program finally uh, i mean the, the interest with which the program was uh, implemented i mean uh, got set back in india Uh, so finally government i mean withdrawn uh, in acquiring land for that purpose so uh, interested to work with the mncs i mean private uh, entrepreneurs okay you can uh, talk to farmers if they are ready to give you can start the business and a uh, province like areas special economic zone program now confined to 5 acres 3 acres 2 acres so what was the demerit of this protest is that uh, we we lost uh, we are we are not able to attract more fdi we are not able to, able to attract more uh, uh, industrial programs it affected our uh, uh, exports it affected foreign exchange reserve i mean it was the best program for industrialization best program for employment generation best program for our, i mean income generation best program for uh, export opportunities best program for, for, ex, uh, for ex, i mean and more foreign exchange reserve in 2005 i mean uh, when when government of india started implementing that program if if accepted uh if implemented properly now uh, definitely i can say that all uh, the unnumbered problem would have been wiped out from india we would have earned not only 5 uh, billion foreign exchange reserve our foreign exchange reserve would have been equal to that of china's foreign exchange reserve i mean uh, 3 billion something like that 3 trillion 3 trillion i mean foreign exchange reserve would have earned and all our uh, educated people would have been uh, got employment opportunities and the income opportunities purchase power would have been increased as professor madan chatterjee pointed out that before covid period also indian economy is under recession only why why we have to face that type of recession in india when such an excellent programs were designed and implemented by the government of india why we are not able to accept that one and one more point is that nearly 14 export uh, export promotion councils were started by government of india nowadays you look at for jemson jewelry we have jemson jewelry export promotion council for electrical goods we have electrical goods export promotion council for uh, um, for elect- uh, uh, electronics goods we have electronics goods export promotion council for leather products we have leather goods leather product goods export promotion council for coconut borders 
license board you see how many boards are there to encourage the our uh, entrepreneurs to uh, manufacture and export the products to foreign countries but still after starting so many export promotion councils we are not able to reach the level of pre independence period 2.4% still uh, as professor madan si pointed out that only 2.3% we are not able to reach even the pre independence period this uh, this is what why i am telling that uh, the way we are giving importance to external sector the way we are giving importance to uh, ex export opportunities i mean not getting uh, that much attraction uh, 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 from the government that is why the atmanirbhar uh, bharat i mean not even a single word is said with respect to uh, external sector the atmanirbhar itself is against the term openness that 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 word you got to understand that we yes government is not telling openly but that is a meaning in fact now we are telling about uh, uh, we, we we don't have uh, we should not import anything from china okay well and good we, we cannot import anything from china is good but what about i mean other countries our chinese products are available in india uh, because it's very cheap uh, but even chinese products are not available in india uh, products from uh, south korea will come products from singapore will come products from in taiwan will come products from, products from japan and even uh, european countries will will come to india but their price will be much higher in the name of quality in the name of i mean uh, guarantee in the name of name of i mean transportation cost coming from foreign countries and uh, it will be much costlier but uh, china is a near, near neighboring country i mean uh, one products are coming it become very cheap and uh, when uh, up to 2000 uh, china was yes sir you can take a few more minutes one or two minutes yes sir i'm i'm coming 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 sir coming sir, coming sir yeah coming sir and uh, so by the time i mean uh, up to 19 uh, 2000 china was not the member of world trade organization you must keep in your mind that china was not the member of god agreement as well as china was not the member of world trade organization but in 1985 china left god agreement and uh, by the time when the world trade organization came into existence its uh, rules regulations are very strict as per the wto organizations so china thought that thought that uh, if china is not the member of world trade organization it will be i mean uh, it will be i mean alienated from the other mainstream economies so in 2000 china submitted its request for join the world trade organization in 99 and requested 2000 onwards it is a member uh, one point you have to keep in your mind that uh, uh, we opened our economy in 1991 up to 2000 chinese products were not available in india when china was admitted into world trade organization within 2 years uh, within 2002 itself in their economy in their indian uh, villages up to main capital to uh, urban areas cities uh, state capital in their india is fully dominated by i mean dumped by chinese products electrical electronics uh, watch i mean whatever it may be not only when the electrical electronics products recently prime minister made a statement two days back that uh, 65% of our electrical electronics market is 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 occupied by foreign commodities 65% of our total uh, demand uh, electrical electronics which demand is fulfilled by uh, goods coming from foreign countries suppose if we reduce 10% of this uh, market uh, we can we can earn around uh, 3.4 uh, lakh crores we can we can save india can save uh, money sir good morning malhotra sir <laughs> so we can save around 3.4 lakh crores of money if 10% of this 65% of our i mean the total import is i mean restricted that's our prime minister himself has stated that i have stated so that, so 65% of our market is i mean uh, occupied by foreign product particularly from china uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, this is the condition i mean uh, but again uh, we are we are we are using the term uh, atmanirbhar i mean uh, against the openness of economy against the external sector of the economy and uh, so uh, what, what i want to suggest is that uh, export i mean uh, uh, should be a part of our uh, atmanirbhar program i mean uh, we have five pillars next uh, export external sector also should be part of the uh, atmanirbhar program i mean maybe a uh, government should consider as a sixth pillar and uh, accordingly and in the future uh, we, are, we cannot close down our economy we cannot completely close down our economy we are part of the wto organization and uh, also uh, and uh, our, 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 our we have to we are we have to export we have to market our products also and uh, 
Mm. So for that purpose, uh, Atma Nirbhar should be a self-reliant economy and also uh, we have to give, we have to produce quality products and uh, competitive should be competitive enough uh, with respect to price as well as quality. Then we can have, we, we can export more to the foreign market so that our, uh, we can also increase our international share from 2.3 percent to three independence level three point at least uh, government of india has stated that uh, we should reach the level of 3.4 percent i mean the prime minister has clearly stated that uh, our share we should increase our share to 3.4 percent in the industrial trade i mean to to that level we have to work we have to work i mean i hope that uh, the uh, the medium and the, the package i mean uh, given to small micro small medium industries i mean they should play a major role they should not only concentrate on indian market for their products uh, they should export, uh, they should produce quality products and they should export to the uh, foreign markets so that uh, they, our share will be increased to 3.2% as what our Prime Minister has clearly stated that. Yep. Thank and, you, uh, sir. Uh,